Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going over this little beauty right here. It's the Wilson Combat Beretta 92G Brigadier Tactical, which is a huge mouthful. Fully understand that. So we're going to get into uh, coming up next what actually goes into all that, what makes it this unique designation from Beretta and Wilson Combat. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, uh, Beretta recently teamed up with Wilson Combat probably a year or two ago um, when Wilson Combat was looking to actually do some customization of off-the-shelf Beretta pistols. Now we've reviewed one here before in the past. It's fantastic. It's one of my favorite guns for sure. Now this one here is a factory offering. So you basically don't have to choose all the customization and all that stuff. You can just buy this gun straight off the shelf, either at Wilson's Combat's website or some of their other distributors out there. Um, but it's a little different than some of the custom options out there and it sort of is a preset package, if you will. And of course has the uh, G decocker and the special Brigadier slide. And we'll get into all those details and some of the other stuff coming up next. Getting into the details on this pistol, a few things we'll point out. I guess we'll start out with the frame. It's an M9A1 style frame, but one big difference is that it has a rounded trigger guard as opposed to the squared off frame that the M9A1 is going to have. And uh, it's a little different there than the 92A1, which is what this pistol started its life out as. You can see this one here has a couple uh, accessory rail slots here, whereas the M9A1 just has the single 1913 style rail up front. Another thing that differentiates this from any of the factory Berettas out there is that there's no polymer parts on here. We'll point out a few of them as we go along, but one of them is going to be the trigger here. This has the steel trigger. What that's going to do is it's going to give you slightly shorter of a reset than your factory M9A1 would have. As you can see there, relatively short compared to your A1s. And of course, it's a little bit crisper as well with the steel, not having any sort of give like the polymer would have. Um, additional differences there on the frame is that we have improved checkering. So you can see up front, we have very good checkering, very even all the way around, as well as improved checkering here on the back strap of the pistol. The magazine release is all steel. It's a little bit enlarged over your standard M9A1 release. It has nice checkering on there. And of course, like any M9 or M9A1 or 92 uh, mag release, it is reversible. So for you lefties out there, you can swap it over to the other side of the pistol if you want to. And the pistol comes with three, they call these sand resistant magazines. They sort of have like a nickel Teflon type finish on there. Uh, very smooth, very corrosion resistant. I'm a big fan of these mags. I think they're some of the best ones that Brett has come out with uh, over the years. So definitely a good thing that it comes with three of them from the factory. The magwell here has a nice flare to it and it also has the lanyard alert for those of you guys that want to use a lanyard. Of course, it doesn't impede anything if you don't use it. The grips are an all drab G10 material with the Wilson Combat logo in there. They have a nice texture to them all the way around. They're going to help improve the grip on the pistol, especially if your hands are sweaty or bloody or whatever the case may be. Moving up here, you'll note that the hammer is a little bit different than some of the M9s you've seen out there. That's the Elite 2 hammer. And we have the Wilson Combat logo engraved just below the decocker. We mentioned the all steel trigger earlier and the trigger pull on it is very, very smooth all the way around. It does have the D spring from the factory on it and uh, it's smooth take up brakes on my scale right at about nine and a half pounds in double action. And then of course we're going to come to reset and single action brakes just about 4.2 to 4.5 pounds on my trigger scale as well. So. It's certainly an improvement for sure. The triggers are actually uh, installed from Beretta, but when these pistols are sent to Wilson for checking, Wilson makes sure that triggers up to their specs as it should be and the pull's smooth all the way through, which is certainly a good thing. 
This pistol is a 92G Brigadier Tactical, and we're going to get into that here in just a second, what all that means. But the G portion of it is the decocker only. Now, that was specified by the French National Police uh, years ago, that was, which is why it's called the G model, um, due to their specification. So what it does is the decocker is not a safety. It's a decocker only. So at this point, when you're in single action mode, you're just going to push down on it and it decocks the hammer. You can see it springs right back up, so that way at this point you're right in the double action mode, and there, it eliminates the possibility of the uh, malfunction clearance or running the slide and putting it uh, inadvertently on safe like you can do with some of the other Beretta pistols. So a lot of folks who are very uh, afraid of that safety being accidentally engaged are definitely gonna prefer this version. Those of you that are new to Berettas and haven't seen how this works, when you actually engage the decocker, what you're doing is you're rotating a portion of the firing pin up and engaging the uh, blockage piece there. So you actually can see as I push down on the decocker, that is the rear end of the firing pin. It's a two-piece firing pin, and it's actually rotating up. So that way there's absolutely no chance, at least if it's working mechanically correctly, that you could fire the pistol when decocking. We covered the G designation. Let's get on to the Brigadier designation. And what that is, is this raised portion that you see right here on the slide. And just to sort of contrast what a regular one would look like, this is what your 92A1 or 92 or M9 slides look like. Sort of a straight line in there, no raised hump. And that's the side profile from the top. What you're going to see here is that it's wider and a little bit beefier throughout here. Of course, that is to prevent cracking, which did happen in some of the earlier M9 versions. Uh, it really hasn't been around and been happening for years, but it did happen early on after tens and tens and tens of thousands of rounds. Now the Brigadier seems to have solved that problem, but also gives you a little bit more weight and a little bit more heft, uh, reducing recoil and allowing you to stay and get back on target a little bit faster as well. The rear sight on the pistol is Wilson's U-notch battle sight and is the plain black one with the serrations on there to decrease any sort of glare that you could have. You can see it has a nice ledge here for racking it on a belt, holster, or whatever, doing one-handed manipulations. And up front, we have a single tritium insert with a nice white loud white outline to allow you to pick it up during the day and that tritium insert is by Trigicon and it's going to glow for at least a decade very uh, bright and allow you to pick it up in low light situations. Disassembling the pistol is classic M9. You're going to lock your slide to the rear by pushing up here in your slide release and at this point we're going to push over on our little uh, disassembly button. One thing I should point out that it is very similar to an M9 with that oval there. You can see on your 92s uh, you're going to have this sort of uh, circle here as opposed to the oval. Just one thing to point out for you Beretta junkies out there who like that kind of stuff like myself. At this point, we're gonna push over and rotate our lever down 90 degrees. It comes right off. And another piece of uh, steel uh, accessories that aren't so on the M9A1, at least some of them, is gonna be the uh, steel guide rod here from Wilson Combat. And uh, take that out of the way. And additionally, we'll pop our barrel out. Now this barrel here is uh, shortened versus say like your 92, you can see the 92, it's gonna have a relatively long barrel sticking out from the uh, slide. This one here is uh, cut down to 4.7 inches. It has a nice recessed crown on there. And this barrel is very similar to what you'd see in a Beretta Elite 2 for those of you guys who are uh, aware of the different models that have come out over the years. Reassembly of the pistol is just the opposite of disassembly. We're going to put our barrel back in our slide. And of course, it has the modified P38 type of uh, lockup that you see here. And uh, some people have a really hard time getting that lug down in there. The easiest way I find is just to kind of push it forward and back. Eventually, it'll go right in there. We're going to put our spring and guide rod back in. And then just put it the slide onto the frame. One thing I should point out is that versus like your standard M9A1 or 92, this has much tighter tolerances in the frame to slide fit and that's spec'd out by Wilson Combat. So uh, if you put it on there, he'll note it is uh, very tight and glides very smoothly compared to a lot of the uh, other offerings by Beretta out there. And that's intentional and spec'd out as such by Wilson Combat. Hopefully by now you guys are still with us and haven't been bored to death by all those details. But um, one thing that we didn't talk about so far was going to be reliability. Now reliability in this pistol has been 100% reliable with any loads we put through it. Uh, the majority of them have been Minuteman munitions. We've also put some Wolf. So if you guys have noticed steel cases flying out of this gun throughout the review, that's why. Uh, plenty of Wolf 115 grain as well as uh, Gold Dots and HSTs, both in 124 grain uh, varieties, which tend to be my preferred defensive loads, have gone through this it just eats them up as you'd expect with a uh, bread 92 type of action one of the most reliable out there on the market for sure and uh, even with those tighter tolerances and the slide to frame fit and all that stuff uh, it's doing just fine now i 
did not bench this pistol. But I can tell you from casual shooting, it's been very accurate. I know a lot of folks out there who are uh, competition shooters who have benched this are getting, uh, depending on the load, of course, somewhere between an inch and a half to uh, two and a half inch groups with it at 25 yards. So certainly it is an accurate gun, no doubt. Now, Beretta's 92s and M9A1 type pistols tend to be very accurate anyway with those tighter tolerances. This makes it even more impressive for sure, as well as the improved trigger. Now, of course, the big question, right, whenever you guys see Wilson Combat, this is myself included, is what does it cost? So list price over on uh, Wilson's website is I think $1,195 as of today. So relatively expensive, yes. However, if you take a look at what uh, the Breda 92G I think SDs are going for. I think they're actually MSRP a little bit higher than that. And uh, of course, historically, those guns have been going much higher than that. Um, so really with everything you get in this pistol, if you're looking for a sort of a high-end type of Beretta style pistol, this is one I take a hard look at. I personally bought this one, so you guys know I'm a fan of Wilson and a fan of uh, Beretta. So this one was sort of irresistible to me. So this is my personal gun. For me, obviously, I think it was worth the money. Uh, like we said, I bought it. So uh, great gun all the way around. May not be for everyone for sure, but I think it's for a lot of folks, particularly folks who are going to enjoy very well-built pistols that are reliable and uh, look great and feel great in the hand. If you guys uh, have any other questions, of course, by all means, post below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video.